it was really important because I matter. And I had to remember that I matter. Sometimes you got to remind yourself. And if you got to say it out loud, say that. I matter. No, I matter. And my feelings matter. The way I think matters. The way I think about myself matters. The way I treat myself matters. Because if I lower the standard for you, then what does it say about me? Wow. What am I saying to myself about myself? Because I might try to tell somebody else I'm incredible. But if I let people treat me like dirt, what does that say about me? How do I really feel about myself? What's up, everybody? Thank you so much for tuning in to another episode of Living Out Loud, where we're living out loud for the one who died for us. My name's LJ, and if you're new here, please consider subscribing. We have conversations on God, faith, and living like Christ. Guys, I know like the past few guests have been amazing, and we got another super amazing guest today. This is Lauren Robinson. This is my friend that I actually met from... uh, the film that I was in, um, The Wages of Sin, and ah, God, what can I say about this woman? She, she dancer, actor, uh, model, teacher. I mean, what what doesn't she do? What doesn't she do? <laughs> She's amazing and just a great, powerful woman of God. I'm so excited to have her on. Ladies and gentlemen, let's give it up for Lauren Robinson. What's up, Lauren? I'll be, my hype, I'll be my own hype. Hey, <laughs> hi, I'm so happy. Um, I'm so honored that you would even consider having me on here. I'm just excited about great conversation um, and whatever God wants to do inside of this conversation. <laughs> I'm here for it. <laughs> Is there anything that I missed? Anything that, you know, you wanted to tell the people more about you? Um, I, I'm just a lover of people. Um, I'm a teacher um by heart so if i can teach to my peers if i can teach to students i am a volleyball coach so if you ever want a little game of volleyball one-on-one i'm super competitive (laughs) and i'm a really half decent pool player i was gonna say really great pool player but i don't want to stick my foot in my mouth with that so (laughs) if any of my pool players out there if you you want to play i got you (laughs) listen i am only good at pool in the iMessage game. <laughs> oh, I'm bomb on iMessage. In person is way different. In person, yeah. In person, I'm I, I need some work. But <laughs> see me on the iMessage. See me on the yeah. iMessage game. <laughs> but Lauren, we're gonna, you know, talk today just about, you know, um what you've been learning, you know, in the past few months in your life that, you know, you've gone through uh, a few things. I'll let you, you know, like talk about yeah. that more uh, yourself. But, you know, you've, you've been go- going through some things. You've been learning some things. Um, you recently, you know, um, had a loss at a like, tragedy. Um, yeah. So maybe you could like we could start there. Just tell us some more about, you know, just just how that went in that journey that um, God took you through in that. OK, so um I'll spare you like the last four years. So basically, I'm I'm from Delaware. Mm-hmm. Um, in my early 20s, I moved to California. God was like, you know what? I'm gonna bring you back. Mm-hmm. And I, I got over the whole like being back on the East Coast thing. I actually really love Delaware. It's been a place um, of restoration for me overall. Mm-hmm. But in December, December 8th, um, I was at work. I was teaching. My students were doing presentations. I had one student. She had my cell phone taking videos of the presentations. Mm-hmm. When I got my cell phone back, I'm sitting at my desk and I looked at a message from my next door neighbor who never texts me. She was like, 911, your house is on fire. Wow. I, I literally just like, I froze for like two seconds and I called the office like, hey, I'm leaving. Yeah. yeah. Um, I said, Ms. Robinson has um, an emergency. And the first couple of things that I did, I never, you never realize how like prepared you are mm-hmm. for tragedy. So I think it's always really important now to just make sure that you are just doing all of your upkeep on yourself Mm -hmm. because the way that we respond is a big reflection of like who we are Mm. at our core. So So initially when I left, um, one of my very close friends, I call him my fave. um, I called him and I was like, hey, I need you to pray. He's like, what's wrong? My house is on fire. I don't know who's inside. I don't know if anyone's hurt. And before I dealt with anything, I, I wanted to just like 
have some you got i think it's important to have someone who can pray for you when you mm. don't really have the words and you don't really know like That's god good. i don't know what i'm getting ready to walk into right. i don't know what's what's there what's not there i don't know if it's burnt to the ground mm. so he prayed um i called my neighbor to make sure i ride was safe mm. i got in my car and i did something i've never done i literally screamed to the top of my lungs and it sounds nuts like i screamed like bloody murder oh, and man. I think it's so important, like, yeah, first pray, right? Yeah. Make sure everyone's okay. Be logical. Mm -hmm. And then you got to let yourself feel whatever you are feeling. Huh. You have got to let Talk yourself feel that it. thing. <laughs> let yourself feel it. Even, you know, I just watched the Passion of Christ, so I'm like, real, real Jesus, real Jesus, <laughs> I'm prone right now. But, like, even Jesus in the Garden of Gethsemane, like, he felt what he was feeling. Yeah. God, you know, if this, if this cup can pass from me, like, if it's possible... Of course, your will be done, but like we see mm. Jesus feel what he's feeling. We see Moses feel what he's feeling mm. about his own insecurities, right? Yeah. It doesn't mean that God changes his mind. It just means like, yo, when I am weak, then he is strong. His his strength is perfect, right? Mm. So it's okay. I can feel what I'm feeling. I can feel this anger. I can feel this frustration. I can feel this fear because I don't know what I'm getting ready to walk into. Right. I screamed. I cried. But it doesn't last always, and I gave myself mm. a set time. As I was driving, I felt what I needed to feel. Yeah, I know when I sh when I show up to that house, regardless of what I see, I got to handle business. Mm. And that that was that's kind of like the blueprint for what has um, shaped my life for I, I'll say <sighs> since the, for the last couple of months. Mm. It was a heck of a way to restart my to start a new year. Yeah, but I think that tragedy can shift you into a new place, and I think that. Um, I think, I think it just is what it is, and mm -hmm. it's a part of the lesson, and you have to fall in love with the journey. Mm. Now, Lauren, I, you came out swinging. I mean, you're preaching already. <laughs> I wasn't, I wasn't ready. I Let not, me put I'm my seatbelt on on that one, Lord Jesus. I mean, <laughs> but, um, <laughs> woo. <laughs> so that that that's so so real. I mean, who all, all that what you said was just real. And I, I believe that um, because you allowed yourself to feel the things that you were feeling, the, the shock, the fear, the anger, all of that, I feel like that, 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 that helped you. Um, because when the last time I saw you, um, it was maybe like, what, a month after that happened? Month, yeah, maybe you two. guys are super sweet too. Please tell the people what you did. I was like, oh my god, my <laughs> friends really care about me. They love me. God gave me amazing people. He gave me a great circle. Yeah, so, uh, me and one of my friends, Evan, um, we all were in the Wages of Sin together, and uh, we came up with an idea of just like hanging out with Lauren, surprising her. You know, we, yes. uh, we said that we were going <laughs> to uh, meet up and do one thing, but it actually was just like a like a a lunch just dedicated to hanging out with her and, and, you know, consoling her and just, you know, like uplifting her. It, it was, it was really just good. Just being who friends are. Yeah. Like, you guys were literally so great. I just went in like, okay, I was so used to just getting things done mm -hmm. that I wasn't really like taking the time at that point to like make sure I was okay. Mm -hmm. And y'all were like, no, we're going to stop everything. Are you okay? How are you? What yeah. do you need? And those are the kind of people that you need in your corner. Like mm -hmm. you guys made all the difference. Seriously. Ah. Uh. That's what we're here for, Lauren. That is what we're here for, seriously. And um, it's so important to have people like that in your life because, like you said, like um, you need people to pray when you can't. <laughs> Sometimes, yeah, you like do. you need you need those people. <laughs> like we, community is so important. We can't do life alone. That's actually no. one of the mottos um at my church. And the older I get, the more that I understand that like we literally can't do this life thing alone. You can't. <laughs> I don't think it was designed for us to do that. Like, I mm. know that people um, use this particular scripture in, like, a, a particular passage, like, a particular context, I should say, mm -hmm. when it says it's not good for man to be alone. Yeah. But, like, yeah, that means relationship-wise. But, I mean, also, in general, right. I don't think it's good for us to be alone. Sometimes you mm. need a period of isolation. I get that. And that is supported by scripture, too. I get that. There's many times where God will take somebody apart. Mm -hmm. But... That's not always. There's so many places in the Bible where we see people having these interactions and being able to be supported, yeah. um, interceding even, like everything. Yeah. I think it's really important for us to have, you don't need a million people, right. but 
You need something. You need something. You need something. You need something. Oh, you man. You do, man. Oh, it's so important. So, you know, like you, you've had this um, loss. Um, and like I said, when I saw you, um, it was like maybe a month or so after. Yeah, um, what I was thing. what I was going to say was like I, I I asked you know like how you were doing and like your response was just so like encouraging and like I really just felt like it kind of like matured you or grew you up um, a little bit. So could you do, like tell us just a little bit about like what you learned through that? I know you you talked a little bit about some of the yeah. things you learned about like the initial, um, but you know the rebuilding after the tragedy how what what did you learn through that journey so one of the things that god said to me as i was driving home now i was like speeding through every light that was ever (laughs) created um but as i was driving home you know when we go through these things it's like man um once once this is over with i'm gonna do x y and z like i just want to relax like maybe if you're a smoker you're like i'm gonna go do some hookah i'm gonna go smoke maybe i'm gonna go out (laughs) maybe um, you gonna have a glass of wine, and maybe you are a Hennessy person, not me, baby. But no, like whatever is your <laughs> right, like please no, please spare me. But like whatever is your vice, you know what I mean? Um, if you're a serial dater, if you are someone who's prone to being alone, whatever mm-hmm. is your vice, I realize that tragedy will try to expose and pull that wow. out of you. Oof. Um, but what I realized was like literally on my way home before I could even dive into like how I would cope with this, God was like, in all this jokes and not, I was like, "Mm." Mm. like, Lauren, you know better. Mm. You know better. You might not be prepared. You might not know that you're prepared for this, but you are. Mm. And you hide your word in your heart so that way you you don't sin, right? Come on. So if if I'm hiding my word in my heart so that I don't sin, even in the face of tragedy, oh, I'm still responsible. I'm I still got to be responsible. I still have to show up. I am still held accountable, right? If you yeah. love me, you keep my commandments. <sighs> All right, God, like, this is not what I want to hear right now because I was not happy about that. <laughs> but so it means I can't go yelling. I can't cuss nobody out. I can't try to mm-hmm. figure out who to blame. Mm-hmm. No matter. Because it is what it is, right? So as I'm going through that, and I realized tragedy illuminates whatever it is that's already wrong. Mm. So I'm not going to say that everything was already perfect. Um, I was in a situation where I was living with my dad and my brother. Um, we were, I will say, collectively, we, we were all kind of codependent on each other to some degree. Like um, in one area, this I might have been dependent on them. On another area, they were dependent on me. Mm. And it, honestly, I believe it was a space where God was like, it is time for you both, for all of you guys to separate. It is mm. time. And I felt like I had known that for a while and we were all dragging our feet with that. Like Mm. my brother, I think he was probably dragging his feet. I was dragging my feet. And sometimes God will allow things to happen. It doesn't mean that he caused it, but it means that he did allow it Mm. because the devil can't move. Nothing can happen if it is not allowed. Okay. You know what I mean? Yeah. So he didn't cause it, but he allowed it. And they couldn't even really tell us to pinpoint what caused the fire. That's why I was like, all right, God. Wow. If you wanted me to get out, that's all you had to do. <laughs> <laughs> Tell me in a dream or something, but in this. Right, like, all right. Can, can I just get like a very clear vision? Like, okay, right. it's like, Lauren, get out. Yeah. Like, what? No, <laughs> can I get something? Oh, fire. Got it. Got it. I hear you. Got it. Got it. Got it. Here we go. So um, I realized like there. So I didn't know how I would respond, but he told me how I couldn't. Mm. He told me and all this jokes or not. And that just was the first thing that came to me as I was literally driving before I saw anything. Um, and I realized that sometimes separation is a good thing. Mm-hmm. Sometimes separation is a good thing. I realized that just because we go to church and we do all these things, um, it doesn't mean that we are treating ourselves correctly, right? So like wow. we always focus so much on like our spirit man. Is your spirit man together? Are you prayed up? Are you mm-hmm. fasted up? Are you... Are you, you know, staying on your face? Are you travailing before God? All those mm. things, right? What about your mental? What, what about your mental health? Mm. What about your body? How are you Oof. treating yourself? Because if you're saying that your body is a temple, okay, cool. But all we are focusing on is our spirituality. We're mm. not tending to the temple. My God. Like, ask yourself, when is the last time you tended to your temple? When is the last mm. time you did something that was good for your mind, your body, and your soul? Mm. Right. 
So since then, like I had never been a person who had um, done therapy. Mm-hmm. And I and I'm also not a person who's like super emotional, like, yeah, I have emotions. I'm empathetic. I'm sympathetic, all those things. Mm-hmm. But when I tell you every emotion <laughs> that I never allowed myself just to do like yeah. give, I went off to I took myself to lunch one day after work mm-hmm. and I was watching soccer so intently so I could stop myself from crying. Wow. And I'm not a crier and I'm not a soccer a soccer watcher either. I was like, <laughs> I don't even know what was happening. I was like, don't cry, don't cry. Don't cry. Like you're supposed to be eating your food by yourself. Like, don't cry, don't mm. cry. And I had to realize like therapy was good for me. I wasn't in a bad place, but we need to release. You have to release. Mm. You have to let it go. You have to deal with the things that you haven't been dealing with. Mm-hmm. Um, you have to set up boundaries during this time. I actually mm-hmm. found that I needed to, like, I love my dad and my daddy's girl. We don't have a bad relationship. I do not have daddy issues, but I realized mm-hmm. that I love you, but right now I can't talk to you. Mm-hmm. So sometimes you have to, like, you have to tend to your mind. You have to tend to your body. I started going back to the gym. I had taken some time off mm-hmm. working out again. Um, playing pool, finding finding outlets, because mm-hmm. one thing wasn't enough. Prayer by itself was not enough. I love God. Prayer by itself was not enough. Mm-hmm. Um, and even with friends who like can be supportive, a lot of times you might find yourself feeling alone, and that's okay. Yeah. Sometimes we're supposed to be by ourselves. Even I told you I watched. I've been reading my word, and and Resurrection Sunday is next week. <laughs> even Jesus in the Garden of Gethsemane, like he went there with some of his disciples they couldn't go all the way with him he's like stay here i'm gonna go over here and pray Mm -hmm. sometimes god allows people to go silent in your life and it's not that they're not there to cover you and it's not that they're not there to support you they were there to support him god allowed them to go to sleep Mm. he said can you can you not stay awake some there are times where the people that god has anointed to be with you Mm. he will allow them to go to sleep he will allow them to be silent because no, it's not about what they can intercede for you. It's not about how they can cover you. It's about what what can you do by yourself. Because sometimes mm. God wants to get to you in a place where it's like, yo, it's me and you. Yeah. Stop trying to depend on the prayers of the righteous. Nah, I need to hear your voice. <laughs> like, I want to know you. Like, what is the relationship wow. that I have with you right now? Because this is like that that tipping point. This is like that mm. turning point. This is the point where everything matters. And are you still going off of like, Oh, this is the God of my mom. This is the God of my dad. This is the God Talk of my homie. This is the God of my pastor. Mm. Or is this my God? And the only way he becomes ours is for us to have these very intimate moments. And sometimes yeah. intimacy, sometimes it hurts because we got to be honest and got to be mm-hmm. truthful. And we got to tell him what we're scared of. And we got to tell him the things we don't want to give up. Yeah. So ooh, when I say he has... <sighs> He has done a work on me. It has mm. not all been pretty. It has not all been roses and fairy tales. But it has been worth it. Mm-hmm. It always yeah. is. It always is. Oh, I felt like I just ranted. I'm so sorry. No, 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 no. That's <laughs> that all of that was good. Um, I did want to piggyback off of, you know, just like knowing God more intimately, you have to get real. Like him. Yeah, that's yeah. that's oh. why I like the Psalms, you know, like all the Psalms yeah. aren't so like happy go lucky like sometimes it's like yo like kill my enemies because i'm tired of them like it, Please, it's, like, bro, real, like, it's real stuff <laughs> the past like i want to say like the past year or so like i've gotten just like more real and honest with god like yo god like i'm dealing with this and for some reason like it's it's been a stronghold in my life i need it gone i need it gone well i don't know why i keep going back to this person why i keep going back to this thing and and it's like when you, God cannot change what we don't bring to him. Like he will not, we, we have to lay it on the altar. He yeah. He's a gentleman, you know, he's not going to just like take it away, take it away. We nope. have to give it. I mean, free will is, it's amazing when we want it to be amazing, yeah. but it can be challenging when we want, when it's challenging. Like mm. they say, closed mouth doesn't get fed, right? Right. You have to say it. He's not mm. going to force you. He's a God. He wants you to want him. Right. And he wants you to want for his, ask for his help, but you got to ask for it. Right. You got to ask for it. It's like, that's why it's like total surrenderance. Mm. Okay. So, yeah, let me tell you about this one, this friend that I have, right? Okay. Not like friend, but like church friend. You know, you see people around. There is this guy. His name is Prophet Timothy. He is out of New Jersey. Mm-hmm. Incredible prophet. 
he led a morning glory session at a conference that I went to last year. It's called the 007 conference. Mm -hmm. um, and it was so good. In that morning glory session, he taught us, like through demonstration, how to be so honest with God. Mm. And you think that you know how to be honest with him, but we're honest about the things we want to be honest about and what we're comfortable with. Uh -huh. But then we're not honest yeah, about yeah, the yeah. things that... I, I don't want to pray about that because I don't really want you to take that yeah, away from right, me. Right, right, right. not done with it. Not yet, yeah. Right. So it's like, those are the things that we need. We need to start exposing ourselves to mm -hmm. God because he can handle it. Right. He can handle it. But I, I just found like, yo, I've got to get deeper with my transparency mm. about the things that really do scare me, about the things that I'm really uncomfortable with, about the things that I don't like about myself, but I'm not ready to give up. But I want to tell you that I'm yeah. not ready, but I want you to still take it from me because I really do want to be in your will. Yeah, it all goes back to just like being honest. He just wants you to be honest. <laughs> That's it. Yeah. What have you found? I know you're asking me. I'm going to ask you a question okay. real quick. Though. What, if, what, if, what have you found has been, I guess, maybe the easiest and then maybe like the most challenging thing about that honesty and like that transparency moment with the father? Mm. I would say... Uh, Hmm, the easiest. Oh man. I don't know why that's harder to um answer. Isn't I, would, it? Yeah. <laughs> no, I guess I'll start with the um the hardest. The hardest part first was saying it out of my mouth. You know, like just mm -hmm. like hearing. <laughs> yeah. Hearing Ooh. the thing that you're going through, hearing that ah it, that that was it hard. The admitting thing. it. Ooh, th that was really, really hard. Because nobody wants to be like, I got problems. Like, yeah. nobody wants to say that. Oh, and be man. honest with it. Like, nobody wants to say it. Oh, man. That, that, was, that was so hard. Is there even an easy part about it? That's what I'm saying. I'm, I'm really trying to think. And I'm like, oh, <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. I, I don't know that it is. I just wanted to ask, like, what do you think? You know, but it, it's, it's so crazy, though, because when you release that, it's literally like a weight off of your shoulders. It literally is. One day I woke up and I was like, something, this is something's weird. Mm -hmm. And I could not put my finger on it. Like, this is weird. What is happening? Yeah. And then I realized, oh, nothing's wrong. Mm. I had gotten so used to since the wow. birth. I was so used to dealing with things. Wow. Every day something was wrong, or every day I was dealing with something that when there was nothing wrong and there was uh -huh. stillness and there was silence, I was like, something's wrong. Mm hmm. Because we get in a space where we're so used to like reacting and defending and surviving that wow. when we really pray, pray for peace, I found God will really give it to you. And you got to pray that you can handle that peace because sometimes it feels weird. Yeah. And I know that sounds weird. But it's like, what's happening, God? You sure yeah. everything okay? Everything's really fine. Like yeah. one day I went to sleep and I was upset and I was crying. I was like, God, your daughter, this is maybe the honest I've ever, the most honest I've ever been. Mm -hmm. I was like, your daughter needs help. I'm not okay. Mm -hmm. I'm not happy. I am disappointed. I don't like this. And I'm like, honest, like, I do not like this. Mm -hmm. And you said that you would help me. You said you wouldn't forsake me. And I need you to keep your word because right now I don't know about it. Mm -hmm. And it's okay to have those very honest moments with him. But I think also when we're having those honest moments, remind him of what he said. Come on. Ooh. Remind him what he said. Had, Hezekiah, I felt like, wait, was it, who was it? Hezekiah, he, he turned his face to the wall and he reminded God of his word. You said this. God. And God extended his life. Like, I had to remind him, like, yo, you are my father. Don't let me, like, I, I feel low. Your daughter need help. Not Lauren. I'm not Lauren right now. I'm your child. Your child needs help. And joy comes in the morning when i say i literally woke up laughing the next day someone he gave me some weird dream I, it was hilarious i'm weak i literally i literally and it sounds nuts i'm so glad thanks i'm i'm single i'm not married because my husband would have been looking at me like oh um, you laughing in your sleep what is wrong with you lady uh, i literally woke up laughing like, <laughs> like oh <what>? no <laughs> and i was like i am nuts but Literally, I went to sleep so low, and I guess that was a literal moment, joy coming in the morning. Yeah. I, he literally gave me the funniest dream, and I woke up laughing, and I woke up with a lighter weight and mm. I, a lighter feeling. His burden is easy. His yoke is light. He took what I had, and he gave me what he had. 
Ooh, I'm about to shout. Can I? Can I... <laughs> oh, let me stop the gun. Nah, babe. Woo, Jesus. I, mean... I like to carry on. I'm here for it. <laughs> <laughs> Listen. Wow. 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 No, but I mean, woo. Lauren. What's up, guys? It's LJ. I hope that you're enjoying this conversation as much as I am because it is so good. Yo, I just wanted to come before you real quick to just remind you that if you haven't already, please like this video on YouTube and also subscribe if you're new. You can subscribe on YouTube or you can even subscribe on the podcast. I would really appreciate it. Um, if you didn't know, I'm on the road to 1,000 subscribers. That is 1,000 subscribers on YouTube and 1,000 listeners on the podcast. Another thing that you can do is share this link with a friend, or you can actually go on Instagram and share all of my content or on TikTok. You can share my contact, you can tag me. Uh, my Instagram and my TikTok is at it's underscore LJ, A-Y-Y. Also, let me know what your favorite quote so far is or what is your biggest takeaway from this conversation so far. Let me know in the comments. And if you're on Apple Podcasts, please leave a kind review. That would help getting um, just the podcast out to more listeners. I can't do this without you guys. We're in this together. If I'm on the road to 1K, I'm gonna need your help. So please help me. Oh, and another big thing that I'm doing, I am launching a Patreon. It just launched this month. You can um, go subscribe on there. All patrons will have access to exclusive content that is just um, Patreon members only. It's called Living Out Loud, The After Show. And the after show, that is basically uh, where the conversations from the podcast continues. So the cameras are turned off, it's just audio. I just had the microphones running and it's just the conversations that happen, more wisdom, more insight. And because the cameras are off, sometimes the filters are off as well. We dive deeper in the topics and you get to know just me and the guests a little bit more through these conversations. Patreon is also a way for me to just connect with my audience a little more closely and to develop a community of believers who live boldly and live out loud for the one who died for them. So that's it. Please like, comment, subscribe, subscribe to the Patreon if you want. I would appreciate all of that. Let's get back to the conversation. Listen, I'm so filled up. Like when I say God has been working on me, he's been working on me and it has not been easy. But when I say it is worth it, mm. it is worth it. When they say I went into the fire and I came out as pure gold, yeah. baby, I understand it. Yeah. I might still be in the fire though, but <laughs> you know, I might be on my way out. Yeah. I did want to go back a little bit. You know, you mentioned relationships um, of how, you know, you needed to uh, push Push your father away for a little bit, you know, like mm -hmm. keep him at a distance. Um, it, it's really important to to know when to do that. You also mentioned to me that you're learning to uphold standards in relationships. So, you know, like how have you learned to uphold standards? Why is it important to do that? Um, the easy and very quick answer to like, why is it important to uphold those standards? Uh, my answer is because I matter. Mm. And... And I feel like sometimes we're like, well, I love you. I know you don't mean any harm by it. I love you. I know you don't mean any harm by it. I love you. I know you don't mean any harm by it. So instead of this standard that's all the way up here, you just keep falling short. And it's like, okay, I'm just going to bring the standard down just a little bit. But then you fall short again. I was like, I'm going to bring it down just a little bit because I, 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 know, I know your heart. Yeah. I'm going to bring it down just a little bit. Oof. And then before you know it, the standard is all the way down mm. and they are still not meeting what it is that you need, like mm. bare minimum. They're not meeting the bare minimum. Mm. And I realized that the way that I was being treated, because um, I, I think, like I said, the fire just kind of illuminated a, a, a plethora of things, if you will. Um, I realized that I had just let the standard down so far in reference to communication, mm. how how I can be talked to, yeah. how I can be treated. Um, and I realized like I got to a breaking point and it should, and I should have not taken it for that long. Um, mm -hmm. But my dad can be like one of those like heavy hitters with his words mm -hmm. and I get it. Like, cause I can, I can be the same way, but I've worked very hard to not, cause you don't want to hurt people with your yeah. words. You don't want to do those things, and especially the people that we love. But yeah. ironically what I found out is that sometimes the people closest to us are the people who don't hold up to the standard. Mm. That's, people, yeah. They don't hold up to the standard the most. 
because if I if I don't know you, there's no way that if you start talking to me crazy and treating me below what I deserve mm. to be treated as, like below what myself as a human being requires, mm. I'm never going to talk to you again. You don't even have to worry about meeting a standard because you won't be around to reach it. Oh, oh. But, okay. <laughs> but the thing is, when there's people in our lives that we're like, I don't want to lose you. I don't, I don't want to let you go. Mm. And they just fall a little bit below. I'm like, okay, well, I can just, I can bypass that. That's not a big deal. Mm. They fall below again. I can bypass that. That's no big deal. And before I realized, it was like, yo, I am hurt by this. I, there's no, I can't, ixnay, whatever. Mm. The, the phrase is, I, I can't deal with this. And I mm. love my dad dearly. Um, I love him to life. But I realized for me, because this is a healing process for all of us, I love him so much that instead of me completely ruining that relationship or having that relationship ruined between the two of us, I needed to pause and I needed to step back. And sometimes the best thing you can do for someone and for yourself is really just to put up the boundary all the way. Wow. And sometimes you got to put that wall up so high that they can't get to you. And that is okay. Mm -hmm. It doesn't mean that the wall has to stay there. It doesn't mean that you never have to speak to them again. But sometimes us reinforcing that boundary, mm -hmm. it's like, oh, I get it. She meant business. She really is not going to, she's not going to take this. Mm -hmm. And that's okay. And then you can let the wall down. The boundary stays high though. Mm. And sometimes we have to learn how to reemphasize our own boundaries because we don't know how to do that. And I realized sometimes the way that I let that boundary down with my dad, I've let that boundary down with other people who have gotten very close to me. Yeah. And I think it, I had to ask the question because I was the common denominator. What is it about Lauren mm. that lets that boundary down with the people close to her? Is Lauren afraid that if she doesn't let the boundary down, that she'll lose that person. Is Lauren afraid mm. that if she doesn't let the boundary down, that the relationship will be ruined? Like, what what is it about me? And sometimes we are the problem because people cannot treat you how you do not let them treat you. Mm. So if I keep doing this, I can't say my dad is a problem. This guy is a problem. That person is a problem. My yeah. best friends. Everybody can't be wrong. Sometimes I'm the problem. Yeah. And I had to look long and hard in the mirror and really be like, well, Lauren, what's up with you? Because you tripping. Because you mm. should have never let it happen. Mm. So when I put that boundary back up and I put that wall up and I kind of like, you know, did a stop hold, like, I love you, but I can't speak to you. Yeah. Um, the relationship has gotten much better. Right. We still don't talk every day. Um, maybe once or twice a week. But... I had a conversation with my dad and I felt like it was like re us re really rebuilding. He was like, I need my daughter. I love you. I miss you. Mm -hmm. And a lot of times the relationship was like, Lauren, I need this. I need that. Can you do this? Can you come here? Can you do this? And it was mm -hmm. just like, I was the person, I was the fix it person. Mm -hmm. um, and I've, I've always been the fix it person. Let me fix this. Let me fix it. Let me yeah. fix it. But then it got to a point where it was like, gimme, 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 gimme. I don't mm -hmm. know if you don't remember the old saying, gimme got shot. Okay. <laughs> 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 like, no, we're not going to do that. Like, if you mm. only call me when you need something, that's a problem. Yeah. It was really important because I matter. And I had to remember that I matter. Sometimes you got to remind yourself. And if you got to say it out loud, say that. Th I matter. No, I matter. And my feelings matter. The way I think matters. The way I think about myself matters. The way I treat myself matters. Because if I lower the standard for you, then what does it say about me? Wow. What wow. am I saying to myself about myself? Cause I might try to tell somebody else I'm incredible, but if I let people treat me like dirt, what does that say about me? How mm -hmm. do I really feel about myself? And sometimes we gotta really sit back and reflect like, clearly I don't care about me because mm. if I did, I wouldn't <laughs> let these things go. Mm. And it's okay to realize like, I don't have it all together. I don't know everything, but I wanna get it together. Yeah. I want to get it together and I'm going to do the work I want to, get it to get it together. I'm going to do the work. <laughs> it's like you said, the, the transparency, like the hardest thing sometimes is like admitting that. Mm -hmm. Like that's the first part. Mm -hmm. We got to admit that God, I've treated myself badly. Yeah. I want to get it together. Mm -hmm. And then then we do the work. We, we cut whatever ties we got to cut. Mm -hmm. We get whatever therapy we need to get. Go to the gym. Mm -hmm. And then I got to a space where it was like every day I wanted to do something. It didn't have to be big. What did I do that was good for me today? Mm. Did I eat healthy? Did mm. I talk good about myself? Mm. Did I uh, communicate with God? Did I work out? 
Did I make myself feel pretty? Did I put on lipstick? Like, mm. what did I do that was good for me, whether it was mind, body, or soul? Mm. And then those are ways that we can start building back up those standards and like mm. feeling good about ourselves. And remember, like, you're worthy. You matter. Mm. You're worth more than what you allow people to treat you as. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. I, um, This is a random, like, tangent that I just uh, thought about. But, you know, like. No, no, no. Go for in, it. Whatever. I'm just thinking about, you know, in like a lot of church services and stuff, like people will go up to the altar saying uh, maybe for deliverance, forgiveness, healing, right. so on and so forth. They get prayer and, you know, like spiritually after you get that and you receive that, it's done. It's already done. But again, there's still work you have to do to walk in that deliverance, to walk mm -hmm. in that healing, to walk oh, yeah. in that freedom. So it's it, yeah. like we need prayer and like action like faith without yeah, works yeah. is dead we need both <laughs> see we're here we're here <laughs> yes come on yeah faith without works i mean like everything that we need has already been taken care of in the cross but there's a part that we play as well mm -hmm here absolutely to see that manifested on the earth so like i don't know why but I, that that just had me thinking i was actually no, thinking about that to. yeah we have to do it's it's it. so getting prayer go to the elders of the church all that that's wonderful i think it's great right yeah but like you said deliverance when you leave the altar you mm. got work to do yeah deliverance is maintenance it, it is can i make can mm. i can i maintain this thing yeah okay i, I had this fresh start at the altar I can give him my burden. Uh -huh. I can let it go. I can release it. Don't pick it back up, Lauren. Right. <laughs> I can let it go and release it. But now I got to maintain it. And I think really one thing that would be very beneficial, I think, to just the church at large is like after we do deliverance, we need like maintenance quiz. Because I know people have Bible study. But what about the maintenance quiz? Because everybody ain't got it all together. Yeah. And maybe I just put the I just left my cigarettes yeah. uh, at the altar. How do y'all help me to not pick these back up? Because mm. on Monday morning when John walks in to my job and he starts yelling at me that I didn't do all the work last week, uh -huh. and I know that I did. I'm going to want to go out and have a smoke break. Yeah, yeah. Hypothetically, not me. But you know what I mean. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's like, how do, we, how do we keep up and make sure like that that deliverance is maintained? Because mm. maintenance is everything. Because otherwise, you need deliverance every week. <laughs> some of us do listen some of us do it's, it's honest yeah some of us do listen i need to be saved again i need Seriously. to get saved every day every day i got every day. single day. every day you gotta die again yeah i gotta die again i gotta die to my flesh because this flesh make you want to punch somebody kick somebody chop somebody in the neck <laughs> But like, all right, God, save me again. Yeah, I, I know I shouldn't have. I, I shouldn't have mm. wanted to get smart to her like I just did. Mm -hmm. I shouldn't have yelled at her in my head like I did. Lord, forgive me. I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, that that is so so true. And I love that you know you were saying that we we have to remind ourselves that we are worthy, that we do matter. Um, yeah, and that that actually brings me, you know, to my to my next question. But like, um, oh, uh oh, yeah. How do we? How do we even begin to believe in the person that God has called us and is destined us to be? So I think a lot of times we disqualify ourselves. Like I am a natural overthinker, and I think that we overthink it. Like, well, guy, I got X, Y, and Z wrong mm. with me. I should not be doing this. Well, yeah. you know um, I. I don't have the money. I don't have this. I know you said I should do this plan, but like I, I'm going to pay for it. And we mm. are the the biggest pessimists sometimes yeah. of our own journey, of our own destiny. And we have to remember that our inequality, the things that, that we would think don't qualify us mm. are the things that actually do, right? And we have to remember like God, the, what is the, the scripture says, um, for I know the thoughts and the plans that I think towards you, yep. right? Um, plans to prosper you and not to harm you right. if we can believe him for total healing we can believe him for restoration we can believe him to to heal my heartbreak why can't i believe him to do something physical mm. that i feel that that tangible that i can touch so i have i have to remember like well god believed he believed in moses mm -hmm. um he believed in noah okay believed in esther to save her people mm. okay he believed in Job. he god Wow. I want you to have faith in me. And I can't say have faith in me and then I don't do what I'm supposed to do. Mm -hmm. God believes in us. That's the thing. 
he wants to see us win. He's determined in death, and he he's like, I want to see you win. I knew you before I formed you in your mother's belly. Yeah, you know what I mean. Like I knew what you could be set out to do. Like no no one is a mistake. Everybody was created for something. Right. And our yes, there are people who are created and connected to that yes, but mm. they can never. They may not walk in their fullness, or we may delay their fullness because we are too afraid. But he didn't mm. give us the spirit of fear. It doesn't mean that some things are not Ooh. scary. But it means that even in the valley of shadow of death, I'll fear no evil because you're with me. So sometimes, yeah, I'm going to be in the valley. Sometimes it's going to be scary, but God is going to be with me. He said, what did he say? Um, I lead you beside still waters. Mm. Still waters is a peaceful place. Yeah, yeah. Even, even in the midst of like whatever, okay, God, if you tell me to do it, I don't know how to do it, but I'm just going to follow their instructions. Mm. And sometimes we're not supposed to see the whole road. I had to realize that. Mm, me I'm too. I'm a planner. <laughs> I'm a planner, LJ. I'm like, I want to see X, Y, and Z. I want to see from A to Z yeah. before I start. Yeah. Me. And I realized <laughs> in this season, in this season, God was like, no. Mm. What do you do when God tells you no? No. I, well, God, I want to see. No. Do what I told you to do. <laughs> what you mean? No. But then we don't want to get in a space where we're stuck in a place that we're not supposed to be in forever. Mm. Remember the children of who was the children of Israel? Yeah. Moses was leading them out of Egypt, and they are so afraid to go through that wilderness. Mm. They stayed there forty years. They shouldn't have been there that long. Right. And then sometimes we get so afraid to go forward. We pray for mm. Lord, increase my territory, give me new territory. Mm. New territory means He's going to take you to a place you've never been. My what happens God. if you want to go to a place that you've never been, and you don't know nobody else who ever been there? So now you asking to go someplace that you never even inhabited. You don't know like who even inhabited. Yeah. That's scary. That could be scary. And then like, well, Moses, we could have just died back in Egypt. I didn't <laughs> get why they said it. Right. But we don't want to be those people. We're like, God is like, I believe in you. I know you can do this. We ready to go back to Egypt. Oh, we ready my to stay goodness. In the for 40 years. No. If you believe in me, I could do it. I could do all things through Christ that strengthened me. That is the most like childish yeah. Um, it's one of the cliche scriptures, not not cliche in a form uh, in a form of fashion that it's like bad, but it's like it's one of those that we learn as kids or like babes in Christ. Mm. I can do all things through, through Christ that strengthens me, mm -hmm. but we don't believe it. Mm. But it's like if you believe it enough, you did not. He did not take those those uh, those lashes for no reason. Yeah, yeah. He didn't get up on a cross for no reason. He did all these things. He wrote out a plan for each and every one of us so that we could do it. Why would I waste my life? Mm. Because if if I if I woke up this morning, then it means that I still have something to do. That's right. That's right. Every day I wake up, I still have something to do. And I don't want to be responsible. I don't want to have blood on my hands because I said no, because I got scared. Mm. And somebody didn't give what they were supposed to get because I was supposed to pave the way. Ooh. Sometimes you have to be the Moses. You have to be the one that's leading people. Mm. Sometimes that new territory... You ain't never been there, but nobody else ever been there, but you the person supposed to open the door. Mm. And it's like, all right, God, I don't know how, but I trust you. Yeah. And and maybe I can't see five steps in front of me, but I can see one. And you said, take the step. I trust you. I'll take the step. Mm. Take another step. <sighs> this is hard. Hard doesn't mean impossible. Hard doesn't mean I can't do it. Scary doesn't mean I can't do it. Yeah. I'm going to take a step. <sighs> okay. You said you wouldn't leave me or forsake me. All right, I know you're gonna stay yeah. take a step. All right, I've now taken three steps. Okay, God, I'm gonna, I'm gonna do it again. You mm. you said this, I got it. And and trusting him is an active process. Mm. Faith without works is dead. I have faith, I believe in you. If I believe in you, I have to believe in me. Mm. I have to. Because you're inside of me. Yeah. Greater is he is on the inside of me than he's in the world. Okay, oh, so my. if I have you with me, I there's no way that I can fail. God doesn't fail. And if you made me and you're with me and you walk with me, how can I fail? I can't fail. The only way I can fail is if I don't do it. Come on. Come on. So, mm. Oh, my God. He tears, me, he tears me up because I, 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 I have to admit I have things, LJ, that I've been afraid to do. Mm -hmm. But afraid still never means impossible. Right. Afraid never means impossible. And I've realized the enemy... He just wants to scare you enough that you don't do it. Wow. Like kids, they be so scared. Mm -hmm. It's something in the closet. It's something under mm. the bed. I'm scared. I'm scared. I'm scared. I'm scared. I'm scared. You find, look, there's nothing there. Yeah. Fear is a powerful thing. Fear will keep people in prison My God. Long, before, long after they get out. Woo. Realistically, we, let's look at slavery for a second, right? Come on. There were 
tons of slaves. Mm. They could have took over. They could have took over. Maybe. <laughs> I mean, in my in my like super black, mind, I'm like, yeah, they could have took over. Get them, get them, right? Like, cause no, I, I don't want to see anybody in slaves. It doesn't matter if it's my people or other people, right? Mm-hmm. But it's like um, they could take over. But if you scare somebody bad enough, mm-hmm. I got this gun. I got this yeah. whip. This is what's going to happen if you do this. Yeah. If you can get the mind, the body will follow. Ooh. The enemy knows the same thing. It's a tactic of war. We we fight not against flesh and blood. Yeah, yeah. It's the tactic of war. If I get your mind, your body will follow. If I can scare you bad enough and make you think that you can't do it, even if you could do it, even if God has every provision already lined up for you, all you have to do is show up. We'd be too scared to leave the house. We ain't mm. showed up. <laughs> mm, mm, mm. It, it starts in the mind. The battlefield is the mind. We got to put on the full armor That's of God. right. Like, you have to. You have to like put that, like I said, put the word in your heart. Yeah. Um, study it. Go to Bible study. Mm-hmm. Be around like-minded people. Mm-hmm. You know, and gotta take care of it. That's right. But you gotta do the work though, because it ain't all on him. That's right. <laughs> oh, that that's right. Um. Oh, there's a couple things that um I wanted to. I'm to sorry. You should. No, you no, no. Just cut me off. I no, no, no. Right. I mean, okay. this is good. I'm just like sitting here, just like, oh yeah, yeah. Okay. Yep. Yep. This is good. (laughs) But, um, you know, when we're taking those steps, we have to remind ourselves of the word of God. Like, you know, like you said, you'll never leave me nor forsake me. You said that, you know, uh, uh, you knew me before I was in my mother's womb. Like we have to remind ourselves of the truth of God's word. Like there's so much truth and there's so much power in the word of God, but, um, we just have to use it. Um, it even reminds me of, when jesus fasted 40 days 40 nights and um, he was in the wilderness and the devil the enemy was like um trying to trip trying to trip him him. tempt him and all these things give him lies but he combated that with the word of god no you say this but god says uh Mm -hmm. that uh men do not live by or live by by bread alone alone. yep but by every word that proceeds out of the word of god the mouth of god so we have to be that's why it's so important to hide the word into in your heart so but that you gotta know what he says because we can't live off of something you don't you don't even know what it is right that's why it's important for us to know it but like you're so you're so right he combated everything that the enemy had to say with, with the word. word with the word mm, and mm-hmm. god gonna win every time i mean every time every single the time the thing is He's Jehovah Gabor, like he is the God of Come he on. Already, yeah. He has already won. He has already worked it out. We already know. It says better is the end of a thing than the beginning yeah. of, right? I already know the end of this is fixed. The fight is fixed. Mm. You have to show up. You gotta show up. And it's more with me than it is against me. <laughs> we have to know. We have to know that we know that we know. I yeah. can't go to church and say, I praise you, God. I give you glory. You're amazing. You're amazing. You're amazing. And then I go home and don't believe him. Mm. And I, but he already spoke a word over everybody's life. There's yeah. something that each and every one of us is designed and destined to do. So if I believe that he can do it, and he believes that I could do it, mm-hmm. then clearly we on the same team. Like let's yeah, just, yeah. let's just get this money, God. Like let's just do this <laughs> thing, right? Like let's make it work. Whatever making it work is, like it's okay to be a little bit nervous. It's okay to be uncertain. Let's just, but still go for it. Mm-hmm. Don't let fear be something that overtakes you because it's, yeah. it's not of God. Yeah. <laughs> Not about. He ain't give us a spirit of fear, but of love and power and a sound mind. Sound mind. Come on. (laughs) Yo, just real quick. I'm sorry. My brother said something to me years ago. And it was like, every time you have a bad thought, he would be like, change. He would literally say it out loud. Like, let's say it was like, you can't do this. Change. Mm. I can do it. And he would say it out loud. Like, he would literally correct himself and say it out loud. He'd be like, what? He's like, change. Mm. And I found myself doing it. He was like, this is not going to change. Nope. I'm I'm not accepting that thought. Watch what you accept. You don't wow. accept certain things. Cue me like, oh, that's stupid. Nope. I don't accept that. That's not dumb. Yeah. Oh, this is not going to work out. You talking about yourself. You're not talking about me. I'm not claiming that. Watch what you allow yourself to think. And every thought is not yours. You might hear something. It might, Come on. The enemy might tell you, you can't do this. Mm. This is not going to work. This is a stupid idea. Nobody's going to show up. Nobody's going to listen. Nobody's going to buy that book. Nope. No, change. I don't I don't accept that. Ooh. I don't accept it. And you might be like, I'm tripping. No, you're not tripping. Mm. I don't accept that. Yeah. 
I speak well of myself. God speaks well of me. Right. God believes in me. Yeah. Say af- people do affirmations, and some it's a lot of people outside of church who do affirmations because they know the power of words. Mm-hmm. We have to remember the power of words. Life and death is in power to talk. Mm-hmm. You better speak life to yourself. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> oh, come on. Oh my goodness, Lauren. Um, I truly, truly, truly enjoyed this. I mean, like this, this was amazing. Um, Same. This is so good. Oh my goodness. I really enjoyed this conversation. You got me full like i'm ready to, i don't know man i'm ready to do backflips run around like this is great well that's how i'm ready for church on sunday i just was at church it's only monday i'm ready for <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh but uh is there anything that i didn't ask that you wish that i did um i don't i don't think so the only thing like me i guess the only last thought that i would I would leave with any listener is just fall in love with the journey. Mm, every stage of it. So don't good. try to get through it. Don't try to rush it. Fall in love with every part of it because every part is important. Every part is useful. Um, and trust God. I I don't. I think we covered a lot of it. Yeah. I just, you know, I feel like I've been chatting a lot, so I'm gonna let you have it back. It's good. <laughs> no, no. <clears throat> this is good. This is good. I'm so with it. I am so with it. And. Uh, Lauren, I really believe that people are going to be just empowered uh, by this conversation that we had. I mean, I, think, I pray, I pray they are. Yeah, we gave we gave people a lot of like just like practical tips on a yeah, lot of things. Because I didn't want to, I don't want it to be like pray, 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 pray. Yeah. Okay, but what do I do when I stop praying? Right, right. Because like that's that's a big thing. Like mm. everything is not prayer. Prayer is a great portion of it. It's a it's a great tool for us to communicate and and for us to listen. Mm. But we got to do things outside of that. Mm. And I think it's important to have those like those tips, like maybe go to therapy, yeah. start walking, do something healthy. What do I, what did I do for myself lately? Yeah. Um, what kind of boundaries do I have? What kind of standards do mm-hmm. I have? Do I think that I'm worth it? Um, do I do I trust God? Do I trust myself? Like what? Like just just being more self-aware, I think, really is just like a, a huge thing. Right. And like, like, just to clarify, like, you're not saying that like prayer is not important. Prayer is super important. No. Yeah. What? I wouldn't do nothing. I let me be very clear. I couldn't got it. I couldn't have gotten half of where I'm at. <laughs> prayer. prayer, prayer is the foundation. That's good. Yeah. Foundation. But it's what I'm saying is it's not the only thing, but it is the foundation. Yeah. It's how we communicate, and it's a way that God can communicate with us. Mm. We shouldn't just be going to pray and and getting Ooh, up. Talk Sit about in it. His presence. Listen. Yeah. Just spend time. Sometimes, like if you're in a relationship, sometimes you like. Oh, uh. I'm not saying anything. You're not saying anything. We're just spending time. <laughs> spend time. <laughs> Just spend time with God. Yeah. You don't have to be saying anything. Maybe have like worship music playing in the background. Spend time with him because he knows the, he hears the prayers of the righteous. You want him to know your voice. Mm-hmm. You don't want to just go to him when, when somebody, when you need something. Mm-hmm. Talk to him. Tell him that you're thankful. Tell him that you just appreciate who he is. Yeah. At, tell him who he is to you. Right. Don't make him guess. Nobody wants to guess. I don't want to wow. guess that I'm a good friend. I don't want to guess wow. that you appreciate me. I don't want to guess that you just like having me around. I don't want to guess that I'm a good provider. I don't want to guess that I put a smile on your face. Mm-hmm. I want to know. Like, really commune. Spend time with him. Talk to him. Be honest. Don't tell him what he wants to hear. Nobody wants that. He created us in his image. We don't want you to, excuse me, we don't just want what somebody thinks we want to hear. Yeah. I want the truth. Yeah. I want to know that you want to spend time with me. I want to know that you want to have a relationship with me. Even if I'm not giving you anything right this second, do you still want to be around? Right. Even if I say no to you, can you handle the no? Are you going to stay around? If I tell you just to wait for a second, mm. just get by yourself for a second, do you still want to be around? Can you handle that? So prayer is the foundation. Mm. That is the starting point. But everything else adds to yeah. that. And then collectively, when we have all those things in line and we're together and we say, God, you know what? Your will be done, not my will. Yeah. Even if it doesn't work out the way I think it should work out. And I know how I want it to work out, yeah, but if yeah. it doesn't work out that way, I still love you. I still trust you. That's right. I'll still do your will. I'll, I'll still go where you tell me to go. Even if I don't want to be there, turn my heart because I don't want to be Jonah. I don't want to try and go on the other way Ooh. when I'm not supposed to. Right, right. I just want. I just no, want. Prayer is the foundation. I'm sorry, cause you're right. People will try. Yeah, to I, I was like, I don't want people to throw them that. stones at you. <laughs> come, come on, y'all. 
Don't throw me no stones. <laughs> I love that. <laughs> Uh, what's wrong with you? <laughs> <laughs> oh my she said, gosh! No, I did not say that. I said prayer is not the only thing, but it is the foundation. Yeah, exactly, exactly. <laughs> uh. Thank you for clearing that up. <laughs> <laughs> they was getting ready, like LJ don't have her. Back <laughs> like no, like I, I knew your heart, so I was like, let me give her. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. thank you. Yeah, <laughs> I'm like I'm gonna give her a chance, you know, like to to clarify. For the people in the back. Yeah. For the people in the back. <laughs> For the people in the back. For the people. Listen. Uh, yeah, most definitely. Lauren, ah, ah, I really enjoyed this. Um, if if anybody wanted to like connect with you or keep, you know, um in contact with what you're doing, um, how could you how could they contact you or follow you? Um, they are welcome to follow my Instagram. That's Lauren L A U R E N underscore right. W R I T E S, the number four letter U. So it would read Lauren Writes for You. You're welcome to contact me or follow me that way. Um, on Facebook, I am Lauren Kit K I T Robinson R O B I N S O N. You are welcome to uh, reach out to me that way. Or if you want to email me about whatever the case is, um, you can email me at Lauren L Robinson Writes. Lauren Robinson writes, writes is W R I T E S. Sweet, sweet. And uh, before we end today, could you uh, end us with a closing prayer? Ooh, all right, I'm gonna try not to take us to church because I'm ready for church. <laughs> no, no, take us to church. Send fire down. <laughs> <laughs> you trying to have revival on here? Listen. <laughs> All hearts and minds, please. <laughs> <Any> prayer requests. <laughs> oh, you silly. Okay, okay. Let me get it together. Okay, God. Let me act like I have a sense. Okay. Father God, in the name of Jesus, Lord, we thank you and we praise you. We give you glory and we give you honor, God. We thank you for who you are. We thank you for all that you are. We thank you for all that you have been, God. We thank you for being the I am that I am, God. Thank you for being the restorer, God. Thank you for being our peace, God, even in the midst of the storm. Thank you, God, for never leaving us, never forsaking us, God. Thank you for keeping your word. Thank you for being consistent, Father, for you have been the same, God, yesterday, today, and forevermore, God. And we know that with you, anything is possible, God. We thank you, God, for godly, um, conversation on tonight, God. For we thank you for having your way on tonight, God. We thank you for using us, God. I pray, my, I pray tonight, God, that this conversation would touch, touch the hearts and minds and the spirits of the listeners, God. That somebody would be changed or transformed. That somebody would see you, God, by listening to this. They would hear you, God. That they would try to say, "What must I do to be saved?" Or, "What must I do to get to know this Jesus that they are talking about?" Father, have your way, God. Get the glory out of all that was said. Get the glory out of all that was done, God. Begin even to open up doors and windows, God, that are God ordained, even for LJ, God, for his obedience, God, for his to his destiny, for his obedience, God, to your word, God. Touch him, God, even now, God. Begin to cause people to give unto him, God. Press down, shaking together, running over, Father. Do it for him. Do it for your glory, God. Begin to speak through him, God, even through his dreams, God, even through um, his interactions, oh, Father, even through his day-to-day -day life, oh, God, even begin to do things, God, that would even surprise his own imagination, God. Thank you for just your kindness. Thank you for your faithfulness. Thank you for your glory, God. Thank you for what you are doing, God. Continue to do it all the more, God, and we trust you and we love you. We know the promises of God are yea and amen, and we believe you, Father. In the name of Jesus, have your way, and all these things we pray, amen. Well... <laughs> 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 oh thank you again thank you so much lauren for coming on i truly truly enjoyed you thank you it was literally my pleasure literally my pleasure this this was incredible like you you are on you are on to something god is god is all the way in this i'm so here for it i'm so proud of you like where you come where you're going um just the whole journey i love this for you i just think i think this is incredible for the kingdom amen i receive thank you thank you again <laughs> <laughs>